Well, apologize for that. Uh, I really should have been reading ahead. But here we are. We have a humidor. And uh, this is a cheap humidor. I got this uh, from one of those Cigars International deals I was telling you about earlier, where I bought eight cigars, got a free humidor. It was like 20 bucks. Shipped. 20 bucks. So uh, you've got this humidor. It's uh, Spanish cedar inside. And what I mean by one piece is you can see that there isn't a secondary layer in here of Spanish cedar. It's Spanish cedar solid through. It's just painted on one side, unfinished on the other. And it's the same thing with the top, with the exception of there's this lip in here, which closes down on top of, you know, this piece of Spanish cedar, creating a seal. Now, if your humidor looks like this and is one piece, uh, you can save it. If your humidor looks sort of like this, but it has a lining on the inside, so it looks more like this. We've got the actual humidor here, and you've got uh, uh, just an extra layer of lining in there. Then you've got another problem. And if you have just uh, the solid piece, not, no, no lining, uh, mold is going to be obvious. It's not going to be hidden behind the lining. So what you can do is uh, you can take vinegar, and this is something I read off of the Nat Sherman website, so I'm not 100% sure if this is correct. However, you can experiment with it. Uh, from what I understand, vinegar is neutral. It doesn't affect the way cigars taste, although it, vinegar smells terrible. Uh, it shouldn't impart any negative flavors to the cigar. And what you can do is you can take that vinegar and wipe off the inside of the humidor and it will remove the, the mold and it will you know kill it from what I understand and once you have the mold off of there just take some sandpaper uh, something fine like uh, 360 grit and go over the inside of the humidor you need to make sure that you get all the mold out of the pores and that the humidor is clean inside you don't really want to use water because you'll probably just spread it around and everything will get damp so I would give uh, vinegar a try, and now what happens is once you get the once you get all this stuff off the sides of your humidor, uh, you've got to let it air out, and you've really got to let it dry and get all that vinegar smell out of there. Just because, even though it's supposed to be a neutral substance, I hate the smell of vinegar. I, I just couldn't imagine smoking a cigar that smelled like vinegar. So definitely let it air out once you you clean it clean it up. You know, wipe the vinegar on there, get all the mold off. Let it let it dry. Take some sandpaper. Go over the inside. Make sure you get everything off, because the vinegar is. Eh, it's going to raise the grain somewhat. It's not going to be anything like water will, um, which is kind of surprising. Uh, vinegar doesn't raise the grain of wood as much as water by any means. So, the little bit of the, the little bit of swelling that you get in the wood that's going to raise the grain. You're just going to knock it back down with a piece of sandpaper and smooth it back out and you should be fine. That would be my suggestion for that type of humidor. If you have one that has a lining, I would, I don't know, I, I'd probably just, uh, I don't know, I, I, I personally would probably feel comfortable pulling the lining out because, you know, I've done lots of cabinet work and a lot of woodwork. Um, I feel comfortable in my ability to pull the lining out, to look behind it, and then put it back in again. So, you know, if you feel comfortable, pull the lining out and, and take a look behind it. Because if you, you know, you've got two surfaces that are buttoned up against one another, and you could have mold growing in between them, and that could be a big problem. You know, you might have some mold on the outside of the lining that you can just take off, but you know, you might have a serious colony or growth behind the lining. So depending on what kind of humidor you have and how comfortable you feel with uh, maybe dismantling part of that humidor, uh, you, you know, you can either try to fix it or just toss it. Uh, it it's really your call. But if you're going to clean it out and you feel comfortable popping the lining out and looking behind it, then uh, go ahead and, and do the same thing with uh, a humidor with a lining that you would that with one that doesn't. You know, use the vinegar, sand it down a little bit, put the lining back in, let it dry out really well. Actually, let it dry out really well before you put the lining back in. And chances are, 
when you put the lining back in, it's going to be a little loose because it's dry. It's going to shrink, and uh, that should actually be a lot easier to get the the lining back in. And uh, once it, it starts absorbing moisture, it's going to swell and it's going to actually fit tighter. So uh, there you go. Uh, de once again, depending on how comfortable you feel with uh, may possibly dismantling part of your humidor, uh, that's my advice. Okay. I'm gonna, well, don't need a break, so let's keep on going. I only got two left. Uh, again, an unknown sender. Uh, my apologies for that. And this one says, I love these question, your questions, my answer episodes. I hope you guys take pride in the service you are providing to the community. My question is a long humidification de How long does a humidification device last before needing to be replaced? I heard Jerry talk about the green foam being replaced every year. Is that true? What about the pucker beads? Do they ever expire? Well, just a second. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, depending on what you have, if you have the green floral foam, I would say uh, check it uh, a couple every couple of months. Uh, the 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 problem with the green floral foam is the fact that it holds so much moisture and it retains all that moisture for such a long period of time you have you have a, a better chance of it growing mold behind the plastic where it's dark and damp and where you're not going to see it so if you have a mold growth I wouldn't even try to fix it I would just pull out the floral foam throw it away and replace it and you can get replacement floral foam from Walmart from places like Walmart or craft stores it's uh, you, you know it's uh, stuff that they put, you know, faux flowers in, or sometimes even real flowers, and then you know they put water in there, and it absorbs the water. And waters, you know, in this, in the case of real flowers, it waters the flowers. In the case of fake flowers, it just holds them in place. But uh, but it's easy enough to just pop one of them units apart and just throw the 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 foam away if it if it gets moldy. Just remember to clean the plastic really well before you put the new floral foam in. As far as replacing it every year, I mean, it all depends on what you're putting in there. If you're using water straight out of your spigot and you're putting tap water in there, then you have a much higher chance of growing mold because of all you know, the, you know, bacteria and and stuff that's going on inside your inside your regular public drinking water. If you're just if you're using distilled water. Um, that all depends too, because once you open the bottle, and if you leave the bottle open for a little while, stuff's going to go in there, and you know, you know it can be it can, can become contaminated. But if you're like opening up the jug, using the water, putting the cap back on, you really don't have that much to worry about. And you could probably go a year or two using just distilled water without any problems. Again, you still want to check it, you know, maybe every six months to make sure you're not growing mold, and uh, and and go from there. As far as the puck and beads are concerned, um, is I was just reading something that, that uh, Dave posted from Heartfelt Industries, and he was saying that it's very rare for the beads to develop mold, but mold can grow on them. And uh, you know, just to get the mold off there, you, you're going to dry them out and you're going to clean them. But uh, they have the f a far less chance of mold actually growing on them. It was it was a real rare occurrence that that it happened to this one person. So. As far as mold is concerned, with the beads expiring, uh, it's ver no, uh, because the mold won't grow inside the beads. It'll just be on the exterior, and you can just clean them off and reuse them. It's no big deal. Um, they can expire over time if you use uh, tap water, if or if you're using propylene glycol. Uh, anything that's going to start clogging the beads will ruin them, and uh, eventually you'll just need to throw them away because they won't work anymore. And it's also said that those beads. Will, will absorb the oils from your cigar. So if you know if the humidity inside your humidor begins to pick up oils from the cigar, you will get oil transfer from the air into the beads. And over time, it's going to change the color of the beads. And I would think that it could possibly clog them so that they wouldn't work. So uh, so they may need to be replaced. But I you know I don't see that happening for several years. Um, if you're using something like a cooler where you've got your cigars in a cigar box or you've got just a big humidor that's mostly box storage 
uh, I don't think you have anything to worry about as far as getting oil inside the beads. But, uh, but the beads pretty much last forever. Um, that's, that's one of the reasons why I use them. Uh, you don't have to worry about, you don't have really any mold concerns with them. But uh, there you go. You can, uh, if you've got, you know, a standard floral foam unit, you can pop the stuff out, throw it away, replace it. It's, floral foam is really cheap. I mean, you can get a brick of it for like a buck at Walmart. And uh, and if you have the beads, well, I, you know, I really don't think you're going to have much problems with mold growing on them. So let's move that along to our final question. And once again, this is an unknown sender, and I apologize for that. And the question is, any advice on throwing a herf? I'm planning on throwing a herf this summer, and I'm wondering what kinds of food should I offer? Should I have drinks or make it BYOB? Should I supply the cigars too? Well, unfortunately, I've never actually been to a formal herf. Uh, just kind of impromptu herfs. Uh, that usually stem from <clears throat> a barbecue, some beer, and uh, a couple of guys enjoying a cigar, and that uh, kind of just develops from there. Uh, just a second, I gotta touch up my cigar. Sorry about that, I was talking too much, neglecting my cigar and it went out. Um, anyway, back to the, the herf thing. Uh, like I said, I've never actually been to a, a formal herf. It's always been impromptu. But uh, I, I guess I'll just tell you what I would think What I would think if I were going to throw a herf. Uh, first thing I would think about is the food. Um, it, it's probably a good idea to have some food, and uh, it may be a good idea to to think about the types of food you're going to offer because if say let, let's say you have a cigar lineup and you want to provide the cigars or you just want to give people a general idea what to bring you know maybe you want to do like an informal kind of tasting thing and you know you want to get everyone's input on a particular cigar or a couple of cigars throughout the course of the meal or throughout the course of the night or the day or whatever it may be you don't want to have foods that are really going to kill the palate so that's Foods like hot wings or really super spicy food, stuff like that's really going to kill your palate, and uh, you're going to have a really hard time really enjoying the cigar because chances are you're not going to taste it once you you know burn things away with you know suicide and hot wing sauce or something like that. So uh, you know, give some thought if you do want to if you do want to offer food, maybe something that's not incredibly flavorful that's kind of mild. Barbecue usually does pretty well. And uh, you know it's really easy to cook. You know you can, uh, you and all your friends can hang out outside, cook on the barbecue, smoke some cigars around, and uh, just have a good time in general. Um, so should you offer cigars? Well, um, if you have cigars to offer, uh, go ahead. Um, if you're going to provide the food, uh, you know if you're planning like a big cookout or something, maybe you don't want to go the root of supplying cigars just because you're going to have a big bill at the end of this thing especially if you're going to offer drinks too uh, and it's not a, you know the herf isn't about you know getting free cigars getting free food and getting free drinks it's uh, it's all about having fun so if you have a few cigars you want to offer out that'd be great uh, you know people would really appreciate that but by all means don't do it if you're strapped for cash or or you just don't think you can provide things that people that everyone's going to enjoy and, uh, you know, people enjoy bringing their own cigars to events like that. They bring things they know they like, they know they enjoy, and uh, that won't cause any particular problems. Like, no one will end up getting sick because they're a mild cigar smoker and you hand them a La Flor Dominicana Double Ajero, uh or anything like that. Uh, BYOB, uh, or, or provide drinks, that's, uh, that's really up to you. Uh, mostly because you don't want to be getting everyone all liquored up if they got a long drive home or if they have any drive home for that matter uh, you know if they're if this is a family thing where you've got you know some friends coming over with their spouse then you know hey you know go for it uh, someone you know someone should be responsible enough to drive home it's not a big deal um, 
I, I see it all, a lot of times. Uh, people will post about herfs and, and having drinks. And usually beer goes over real well. Um, you don't see a whole lot of people posting pictures or posting stories about, you know, they provide they provided their guests with other than, and a wide array of scotch and wines and this and that. It's all about having fun. Uh, just if you, I'm sure if you're inviting people over, you have a general idea of what they think is fun. Uh, I know for me, a couple of beers, a couple of cigars, barbecue outside in the sun on a nice day, and I just couldn't be happier. I have a great time, and uh, I'm, I'm sure most of your friends would probably feel the same way. So, uh, so you know, just do what feels right, or do what you're capable of doing. You know, don't overextend yourself because you want to throw a herf. And, you know, it's all about having fun, including you. You know, you don't want to be stressing out over this whole thing, knowing that, you know, you've got to provide this and provide that. But, you know, again, I just can't say enough. Just uh, do what... Do what you think is fun, or you know, do what makes you happy, and what's going to make everyone else happy. Sorry, I couldn't offer any more advice than that, but uh, you know, that's that's pretty much just the way I think about it. Um, well, yeah, I guess I can go a little further with this. If I were going to throw a herf, I, I'd probably do it just as I <coughs> just as I told you, barbecue. I'd probably pick up a case or two of beer, something light that you know everyone will like, and. <coughs> You know, I might put out a couple of cigars just for people to pick through if they want them. But uh, I would definitely tell them to bring some of their own because I probably couldn't provide enough cigars for for some of my friends. They would go through quite a few of them. So once again, that's my opinion, and uh, that's about it for question or for episode eight of my questions or answers. Uh, <coughs> before I get out of here, I just wanted to mention one other thing, and that is the. Battle of Cigars over at CigarJack.net. Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's set up like uh, like a playoff tree, where he's got all these cigars set up. You know they face one another in their own bracket, and uh, and eventually one cigar ends up winning. You know and there's a long list of cigars to uh, to vote for. You actually get to go and vote for them. Go vote for your favorites. And uh, it's pretty neat. Just check it out and uh, see how it progresses and, and who wins. You can definitely influence who wins by going and voting. So uh, go vote for all your favorite cigars over at www.cigarjack at c i g a r j a c k dot net. And that's it. Uh, it was kind of tough doing this thing alone, but uh, I don't know. Hopefully you don't think it was too bad. I know it was kind of rough, but. Uh, Anyway, again, uh, Jerry, best wishes to you and your family. Uh, I hope everything, you know, well, you know, I can't say I hope everything is okay because uh, just, you know, I know things are rough right now, but, uh, I, you know, I, I hope things get easier and everything eventually is, is good for you and your family. So, uh, again, best wishes. Uh, and uh, that's it. Yeah, I appreciate everyone for taking the time to watch this. Uh, again, keep the questions coming. Uh, in two weeks, I'm not sure what the actual date is, uh, Jerry and Brian and I will sit down, or hopefully all three of us will sit down, and we'll do this our usual way. It won't be just one of us. So, uh, thanks again. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch the video, and I will see you in two weeks for uh, another one of these Your Questions, My Answers. Happy smoking.